And welcome along to Track Talk for Friday the 20th of October. Loads look forward to this weekend at the Singapore Turf Club. The big day being Sunday afternoon. Two feature races coming up, the first of which is the Group 1 Raffles Cup, the second leg of the Singapore Triple Crown. And also featuring on the same card Sunday afternoon is the El Dorado Classic. Two wonderful races uh, to look forward to, uh, but prior to that, uh, we've got an eight-race card all on the poly track this Friday evening. Uh, and still some very nice horses uh, to look forward to uh, indeed, notably in race number six, a very classy looking lineup uh, for that race. And the man that joins me in the studio, I'm sure, is most definitely looking forward uh, to the action on Sunday afternoon is Thomas Wood. Tom, how are you? And plenty to look forward to this weekend. Very well, thanks, Nick. Hello to you and hello to everybody. Really looking forward to what should be an outstanding weekend of uh, racing here at the Singapore Turf Club. Friday night, we've got some of the best poly track uh, sprinters in Singapore going around in uh, the feature race on Friday night. And that uh, is certainly an appetizer onto a Sunday's card. Of course, the running of the Group 1 Raffles uh, Cup over the 1800 metres. Debt Collector going around with the Count of Monte Cristo. Limsa Cruiser has come up with uh, a rather awkward barrier draw again and of course on Sunday afternoon we've got the running of the Group 3 El Dorado Classic and that uh, should give us certainly uh, more of a pointer to what potentially is going to happen in the running of the uh, Desta Singapore Gold Cup on November the 12th. So uh, next something for everybody uh, this weekend should be a, a great day. Certainly should uh, Tom Lodes look forward to and, and as always with some of the, uh, the big race meetings here in Singapore we do normally get some visiting jockeys and as we delve into some of the news leading up to this weekend it certainly does figure uh, around a couple of uh, visiting riders uh, indeed and a lot of jockeys uh, in the news and uh, Tom as we uh, delve into the news Glenn Boss uh, he's been cleared to ride in the Raffles Cup I dare say uh, Glenn Boss a very relieved man indeed this was the incident uh, that took place uh, back in his native Australia he is he's uh, in the horse there with the the white colors having to be uh, straightened up over the uh, concluding uh, stages um, he got originally 10 meetings from the uh, the stewards uh, after that incident and uh, since then he uh, well has gone back uh, to the appeals board and um, ended up uh, getting it reduced down to seven. He, is, he has indeed, and, and in other news, uh, Ronnie Stewart, uh, a man familiar uh, to many punters uh, and horsemen alike uh, here in Singapore, will be returning to take rides this uh, Sunday afternoon, granted uh, a one-day licence here in Singapore. So certainly looking forward to, to having Ronnie Stewart here, Tom. Yes, uh, Ronnie Stewart uh, coming over, of course, of El Dorado uh, fame. Of course, got the El Dorado Classic on uh, Sunday afternoon, so uh, great to have uh, him in the town. He picks up a nice uh, few uh, rides uh, for Sunday. Um, as we record this episode of Track Talk, we haven't actually been advised what is happening with uh, William Pike mm. because I've heard unofficially that he's not riding, but nobody has actually advised us to tell us that he isn't riding and if Glenn Boss takes those mounts, one would presume that is the, the logical thing that would happen, but as we record here on this uh, Thursday afternoon, we still haven't been told what is actually happening. Indeed, uh, William Pike uh, was due to come over and, uh, and take a, a very nice book of rides uh, indeed. But uh, in other news, uh, looking ahead uh, to the feature race, uh, Michael Clements, a man that's had such a great year, has got two very exciting horses lining up uh, in the Raffles Cup. Chopin's Fantasy being one, and the other being Count of Monte Cristo. And earlier on this week, Tuesday morning in fact, Matthew Jones caught up with the assistant trainer, Michael White. Business end of the season, uh, Michael White, and you've got two terrific horses going into the Raffles Cup. Firstly, uh, Count of Monte Cristo beaten again at a mile last time. Is there any question mark in your mind about the trip here at the 1800 metres? Oh, I think so. It's uh, certainly a question mark. Uh, as good as he was in the uh, Cranji mile, it probably suggested that at this stage he runs a strong mile, but it's probably as far as he wants. But um, in saying that, the horse is as good as he can possibly be. He's absolutely, and Galt's been great, so um, we'll give him his chance. Was he always? Uh, was it always the intention to go to this race? Yeah, it was. Um, it was always the, uh, the idea to go to the 1800 um, and then give him a break and get ready for the Derby. Obviously, with the infantry coming out, that uh, that you know extra incentive. Oh, for sure. Um, and we think about it, like um, they beat the rest by three or two and a half, whatever it was. So it, was, it would have been dominant had he not been in the race. So him not being there certainly helps. With Count of Monte Cristo, a new rider, um, obviously with Manuel Nunes going on now, replacing Glenn Boss. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of a musical chair scenario. Um, Lucky to, very lucky that um, Manuel's available with the infantry coming out. Um, but we're in a similar spot uh, with, with Glenn with uh, Alibi a few months ago. So you find in these sort of races, things just tend to work, work, work their way out. But um, yeah, happy to have him on. Obviously, a big race rider. That needs no introduction. So I don't think we'll lose much. Has he been doing much of the work on the horse? No, I never sat on him. We'll probably put him on later in the week just to give him a bit of a feel. But he's pretty, he's pretty uh, push button. You don't need to know much about him. And Chopin's fantasy. Now he, he looks as though, and you've always said that he's crying out for the trip. Again, he didn't win by far last time, but the form through chairman very good. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to think also, um, he carried the 58 and a half and run 0.02 slower than the committee's prize in the same day. So 
probably would have won the committee's prize, you know, with 51 and a half what he would have carried in that race. Um, as I say, a crying out for the 1800. Gives away a lot of uh, big race experience and obviously rating points to the other horses, but we do think he's up to this class and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he does with the blinkers on. Just looking back through the years, horses like Keshwa, Bahana, they were sort of lightly raced, but winning and going through their grades, he's very similar to that, isn't he? Yeah, he is, and like, like we've always said, he's never going to be a horse that wins by a margin. Um, he'll just do what he has to do and um, he just keeps winning and, and the form around him throughout his, all his runs have been, has been phenomenal. Just a bit more on the trial the other day, um, wearing the blinkers? Yeah, great. Um, they run super time in the trial, Novus was really running along and he travelled great throughout. Um, in all the, all the gallops he's had in the blinkers and in that trial, he's, um, he's travelled a lot better, which is obviously what we want to see. It's just a question mark as to whether um, when Vlad pushes a button on him and he can't see what he's chasing, will he chase or will he sort of float even more? But um, it certainly showed us enough to uh, warrant giving him a try. Well, quite simply, two wonderful racehorses uh, lining up in the big one. Obviously, Count of Monte Cristo, Thomas, has sort of established himself now. He's obviously running some of the, the top features uh, throughout the three-year-old series. But Chopin's fantasy, I mean, he's coming through some very strong form. This is tougher, uh, but he certainly looks a horse crying out for this trip. He certainly does. So the way he has been winning his races, he never wins by uh, much, but uh, he's, a, he's an exciting horse. He's got the uh, pedigree to uh, match uh, what he has been uh, doing and really looking forward to uh, seeing how he steps up on a Sunday afternoon. Count of Monte Cristo, there is certainly the uh, the unknown factor whether he'll get the 1,800 metres. I, I personally think he will. And as um, Michael White said, there's certainly musical jockeys. Of course, Glenn has been riding uh, Count of Monte Cristo. One can presume he goes to uh, Lim's Cruiser, even though nothing's official yet. Of course, William Pike not coming to the the meeting uh, now. But, um, yeah, interesting times and thoroughly looking forward to, to uh, the Group 1 raffles. Yeah, most certainly are. And actually, there's a little bit of irony uh, in uh, the whole uh, Mamal Nunes riding Count of Monte Cristo because it was on the same day uh, that he rode Yabba Dabba Doo in the same silks and he beat Count of Monte Cristo uh, on infantry. So uh, I dare say the Brazilian three times champion here in Singapore We'll be looking forward to, to getting onto the back of uh, Count of Monte Cristo. In, uh, in other news, let's uh, catch up with the book. And these are some of the horses that we uh, found from last weekend. Some interesting horses here to follow, uh, we hope. And uh, I've gone with Val Buena here, who certainly outrun his odds. I think he was uh, somewhere in the mid-30s for the place. And uh, once Alan Munro uh, gives him a couple of taps behind the tail, he, uh, he really did sprout uh, wings and finish off well. So expect to see a good showing from him next time. And that was a nice return indeed. I went with uh, Zach uh, Kaza here. Um, this horse uh, ended up running third in this restricted uh, maiden race. So we had um, on the inside Easy Does It and uh, the El Arabia horse on the outside. The, the two horses in front came together. You can see the rider of uh, Zach Kaza just having to uh, take a little bit of a hold over the final stages, but there was no protest. But I think uh, he will certainly win a race at short notice. Yeah, he certainly will. He's a lovely horse uh, going forward, that's for sure. Uh, let's now catch up with the premierships uh, here in Singapore. We are working towards uh, the end of the, uh, the year, and, uh, and there they are currently, the trainers. Mark Walker uh, on top with 77 winners. Will he, won't he get to the 100? Well, he's got, uh, I think it's 13 race meetings uh, to achieve it. Shane Birchig has had a great year, 53 winners uh, for Shane. Ricardo Lagrange uh, very much in the same sort of mould, 52 winners uh, for Ricardo this year. What a season it's been for him. Uh, Alvin Tarn on 46 and Michael Clements, 45 winners there in fifth. The jockeys, uh, Vlad Jurek, 72 winners uh, uh, is what he currently uh, sits on at the moment. Mamal Nunes, uh, 58 winners in second. Glenn Boss, uh, who will be riding uh, on this big race day Sunday afternoon, 47 winners for Glenn, 46 for Michael Rod, and 44 for Nuresh Joglau. They round out the top five. And the apprentices, well, CC Wong, he's, uh, he's pulled a couple clear now of Zuwari, 27 to 25. Waisu Lim on nine, Si Kung on seven, and uh, Amaral. Uh, I Amaral is having such a good time recently. Seven winners uh, makes it into the top five uh, as far as the apprentices are concerned. So let's uh, take a look at the details uh, for this Friday evening fixture. We've got eight races uh, coming up, all on the poly track, uh, and we kickstart things at uh, six at fifty. So we're saving the turf for Sunday afternoon's Group One race day. So eight races on the poly track this Friday evening uh, for us to get our teeth stuck into. Let's uh, now take a look at the race card for race at number one. It's a Class Five Division One, thirty-five thousand dollars up for grabs here. First past the post heads them. Land below the wind. Satellite Prince, Mongolian Chief, Big Guardian, She's the One, The One, Giorgio, Start Me Up, uh, Without Prejudice, down towards uh, the bottom there. The opening race uh, over the 600 metres, and that is the 10 strong field for the lineup. Big Guardian, a hood comes off, pacifies first time, and without prejudice, the blinkers are uh, coming off. Well, Tom, we're going to start by looking at first past the post, who 
Hasn't really shown a great deal uh, in the way of form as yet, but uh, a decent run two starts back. Yeah, that uh, was over 1,600 metres in a maiden race. Gets into Class 5 for the uh, first time. Uh, CC Wong engaged to for um, Leslie Koo seem to be working OK there. As we look at uh, Land Below to Win now, who's uh, here on the outside. Shane Birchiger, this horse uh, was uh, two lengths away from Sacred Galaxy and Ikranji D last start. So getting back down to a Class 5 was actually held up, but I thought to uh, ran home OK on that occasion did Land Below to Wind. Certainly did. And uh, one horse has got plenty of form in this grade is Satellite Prince. He's had nine runs in Class 5, three wins and a couple of placings to his name. He's won over the trip, Tom, but never the course and distance. What did you uh, make of his chance in this? Now, well, um, you look at his uh, polytrack effort, um, just the one win from 26, um, 1,600 metres. He, he loves a 1,600 metre trip. Uh, look, uh, if it was on turf, I'd definitely have him in the mix, but I, I'm just concerned uh, with him being on the polytrack as one uh, win uh, record there. Craig Grills jumps on board to nourish Jaglal in the past, has uh, got on uh, nicely with this uh, runner trained by John O'Hara. He certainly uh, has, uh, Tom, and one horse that only run very recently uh, was Mongolian Chief. And we can now take a look uh, at his past run. This was uh, only seven days ago. He ran fourth on this occasion, and uh, you can see he's come from quite a way back. He'll sport the, the club colours, or, or the pink with the purple cap anyway, not the usual colours we're used to seeing him in. But he's a horse that's got um, you know, a nice enough sort of bit of form. And I guess this run last time was a pointer that he's, he's sort of returning to somewhere like he's better for. Yeah, and he's been in the money for his uh, last uh, couple, or been in the money in his only two starts over 1,600 metres. But uh, he probably doesn't know if he's Arthur or Martha, if he's coming or going, because he's been over 1,000 metres, 1,100 metres. Um, 1,200 metres, 1,800 metres, all in his last few starts. So, um, look, I've, I've included him in the tips. Um, he's got an OK record over the trip, and uh, Leslie Koo, the trainer. Indeed, and uh, the next one we're going to have a look at here. Now, this is She's the One. She's had 13 opportunities so far, and last time out she ran really well. $27. She did drift, but she was still favourite, and she chased home a horse rated 22 points. What sort of weight can we give to this form, Tom? I, th I think she's potentially overdue a win. Well, I think she is the one here. Uh, she's the one for uh, Vlad Jurek and uh, Mark Walker has been a beaten favourite just on that uh, one occasion. That was last start and I think uh, deserves a win here and I think can go close in this lineup. Yeah, we'd certainly have to have a big chance. Now, here is the one. Now, he was third uh, on his most recent start. He caused a bit of a, an upset, really, and what probably wasn't the strongest race um, back uh, two runs back, but this was a nice run uh, in defeat, and he's holding some handy form. He actually went uh, around a, a reasonably priced uh, loose favourite in that race at uh, $24. That was in behind Satellite uh, Star. He did it uh, OK in the end of the uh, one. David Cock, he's had a bit of a light year on the uh, winners this mm. year, hasn't he? And uh, Manuel Nunez on board again. He has uh, indeed, uh, David Cock. Hopefully uh, a bit better fortunes of him. Anything else in the race, Tom, do you think uh, deserves a, a bit of, uh, or warrants a mention at least? I thought a horse down at the bottom, start me up, could be... Uh, a little bit of a chance. Yeah, well, he was only beaten three links behind uh, Armistad last start, his uh, stable mate, but you probably have to uh, question that form now mm. because Armistad, in arguably a, a weaker race, I think it was last Friday night from yep. memory, just showed nothing at all, was gone at the 600 metres for Plissé. He was having to stoke the horse up, so um, the jury just might be out there. Most uh, definitely. Well, let's have a look at the tips, uh, shall we, for race set number one. It's, uh, it's a tricky one to work out, but I'm going to go with She's the One, number six on top. I think she's a, a decent chance, having run well recently. Land Below the Wind, uh, a horse I think could certainly go well over this trip. Giorgio uh, was one I've put in as well. Quick mention on him, he didn't run too badly last time, and he'd been two lengths. And Big Guardian uh, made up my quartet here, six, two, eight and five. Six for me, She's the One to be to two Land Below the Wind, first past the post at number one and four Mongolian Chiefs, six, two, one and four.